Hey students, both 7th and 8th graders and 9th graders. I'm here in Lyle in Vientiane, and I'm going to try to incorporate some of your vocabulary words in a visit to the COPE Rehabilitation Center. All right, I'm hot and sweaty. Luckily, you can't smell me. Come on, I'm going to bring you inside. All right, okay, this is Miss Sins, and I'm inside the COPE Rehabilitation Center, and it's in Lyle, and it's a place uh, that gives a lot of information about buying a fake leg for any of the people who have lost a leg in Laos due to landmines left by the good old Americans during the Vietnam War. If you come over here, so where's my big head? It even says you can buy a leg for 75 American dollars. When you go inside, there are fake prosthetic legs from different um, people who've made them themselves or as well as old ones that have been donated to COPE. Inside, we're going to look and study a bit of the atrocity of what happened at Tu Lao during the end of the Vietnam War. Okay, so dangling behind me, you see all those balls? Those aren't big pieces of snow. Those are called bombettes. And what bomb mets are, are little tiny bombs full of like needles and pins and things like that. And so if you step on them or ignite them, all the pieces of shrapnel can go out and blow off a leg, arm, kill you, or maim you in some way. I think if you've had Mr. Penowit, he might have told you a crazy story when he was a kid. Oh, he found a bomb bet near his home and he just thought it was a funny looking ball. So you might be wondering, if it was a Vietnam War, why was Lao the one getting annihilated? Check this out. Okay, so this one here is called like a pineapple bomb and it sort of implodes like a pineapple when it's dropped. So let me try to explain briefly. During the Vietnam War, a lot of the American aircraft were stationed out of Laos. Uh, the CIA had a hidden um, air base here that I just told all of you who didn't know that. And they would go to bomb Vietnam. But when they came back to Laos, they were not allowed to come back with a whole plane of bombs. Why? Because it'd be pretty dangerous. So before they landed, they would have to drop their payload of bombs in Laos. So even today, there's something like, um, I'll go over there, read the sign. There's like more bombs dropped in here than all of World War II. And the crazy thing is, all the bombs, or a lot of the bombs are still around. Okay, I'll let you read it if you can. It says, from 1964 to 1973, the U.S. dropped over 2 million tons of ordnance over Lao PDR in 580,000 bombing missions, the equivalent of one plane load every eight minutes, 24 hours a day for nine years. L. So every time when I come to Laos, and hopefully not the sweaty, I come here and um, I've donated like a lot of money. I am a benefactor of Coke. I just feel like for 75 bucks, I could change a kid's life. But here they created like a fake hut or the type of housing you might consider a hovel. Um, they might consider a manor, depending on your point of view, of the average person from Laos. And you could check out how many of these things are made out of bombshells. Okay? Juggling a bit. I'll turn it around. I'm tired of looking at my head. Okay, so they would usually have a little uh, shrine in the middle to worship their, their ancestors. Um, this is cool. This thing here, hanging from the wall, or the ceiling, they would hang meat from their hook here. And why they would do that is there would be water in this coconut shell. And with their meat down here, it would keep ants from eating their meat because the ants would not swim through the puddle of water in this coconut shell. All right, a lot of these other things are made out of the remnants of bombs that they have found. 
your clothing, drawings kids have done. All right. But here is the Great Wall of Legs. And you see these amputated, not amputated, these prosthetics that um, were either made and worn out by organizations like COPE, or some of them are what desperate people made themselves. Like this one here, out of shreds of cloth. Middle schoolers? Now here is an advocate. We have an advocate here of the COPE Center who is actually also a former per person who was rehabilitated here. I have the book, his name is Robot Boy, or that was the pseudonym his friends gave him because he had a fake leg. He had a fake leg, not because he was hit by a bombette or he, one exploded, but because he was hit by a truck. Uh, you can read the story in Robot Boy, I have it. Here are more fake legs. Here's this guy using, um, what's this called? The phantom pain. A lot of times when people have a missing limb, they still feel pain in that arm. You know, go figure, your body sort of acts weird. So they created, I'll try it over here. So that one arm is his big phantom arm. You see that? We call a phantom mirror box. All right, there is a mirror in here. I'm doing an awful job of trying to explain it. But when someone is an arm in the box and looking into the mirror, fools the brain into thinking that the reflection is a missing arm. And so moving the arm, massaging or scratching the place where the itch is, is perceived can help. So this boat was made from a B-52 fuel tank dropped during the war. This boat came from a village in the Nam Guang River in a province that I cannot pronounce. 